today I'd like to make the case to you that minerals are essential to our lives and to the fate of our planet. And my argument starts with this egg. It was laid last night by one of the chickens that roam in my garden. Now, I can see that there are some confused faces in the room, faces that are saying, what do eggs have to do with minerals? And that is the conundrum of this topic. Minerals are so embedded in our lives as to be mostly invisible. And so far, they're not a visible part of the global sustainable development agenda. The shell of this egg, it's made of the mineral calcite. Overnight, our chicken, Schnitzel von Crumb, <laughs> formed this eggshell from the limestone that's added to her feed. Once I boil my breakfast eggs, I don't know about you, but I like to add a little bit of salt. Table salt is the mineral halite, and the salt that I use is formed from the evaporation of seawater, a process that might take no more than a few days or weeks. By far the most fascinating part of my breakfast story is that I'll be chewing on this salty, delicious egg with these teeth that I've grown in my mouth that are made of the mineral appetite. That's right. You could say that we are part rocks. <laughs> we all grow up believing that minerals are not renewable, that because they are formed over geological time, that they can't be regenerated quickly. And the people that told us this did so literally through their mineral teeth that they themselves have grown. There is no doubt that some of the minerals that we use as humans, like the metal sulfides mined for copper, are progressively formed by slow geological processes, and that this does have some bearing on how we should manage those resources. But the argument that minerals are not renewable and therefore are incompatible with sustainability, it's a fallacy that has had very wide ramifications. Earth, water, air and fire. These were the four classic elements of nature as viewed by the ancient Greeks as the basic ingredients of our world. Our planet Earth, it's mostly made of rock. And aside from water, minerals are the natural resources that we use most as humans. But when it comes to imagining a sustainable world, our present society is really uneasy about creating a place in this utopia for minerals. In 2015, 193 countries of the United Nations General Assembly adopted the UN Sustainable Development Goals. The SDGs are built on decades of work on sustainable development and are described by the UN as a shared blueprint for people and the planet. The 15,000 word SDG agenda that the countries of the world adopted made no reference at all to minerals. Forests, fisheries, wildlife, pasture, energy, water, air, and genetic resources, they're all referenced. Agriculture, water resource management, forest management, they're all described in detail. Farmers, herders, pastoralists, fishers, they all have a place. But minerals, mining, and miners do not. Food is referenced 26 times. Food security provided the authors of the SDGs with a concept to frame a dedicated goal. The same is true of water, another essential natural resource with a dedicated goal. Minerals not only don't have a relevant goal, but the resource, the occupations, the activities, the sector, don't appear at all in the agenda. Until our work, Mineral security was not even a concept in sustainable development. How could this be? How could minerals, one of the classic elements of nature, so key to human existence, not be explicitly referenced in the global goals? I'm a geologist. I come from a family who, like many others in Australia, make their living from minerals. My grandfather fossicked opals, sapphires and agate. My father drills wells. My brother works for the Department of Resources. Two of my brothers-in-law work for mining companies, as do two of my neighbours. I grew up loving rocks, but I also grew up loving the ecosystems that cling to the landscapes that rocks create. 
While I studied geology, I was active in the environment movement. Many of my friends thought that this was a contradiction, but I felt at home in both worlds. Most of my career has been devoted to addressing the social and environmental ills of mining. And in 2013, I found myself as a member of one of the United Nations committees providing advice on the formulation of the Sustainable Development Goals. We prepared reports describing the importance of minerals and their governance to sustainable development. And we drafted suggestions for the wording of the goals and targets that were inclusive of minerals. Ultimately, however, we were unsuccessful. And the SDGs are silent on how, if at all, minerals can be part of our future sustainable world. Aside from the issue of their perceived unrenewability, another reason why I think that there's a reluctance to include minerals in the sustainable development agenda is that the stories that we tell as a society about minerals, mining and miners are told in just one dimension. They're stories about irresponsible companies running roughshod over the environment and communities, fueling conflict, clearing forest and fouling rivers. This is understandable. These stories are based in fact. And mineral extraction can be an impediment to sustainable development. There are other dimensions, though, to the mineral story. Not so readily told, but just as important. Now, if you haven't grown up in a family of geologists, you could be forgiven for thinking that mining is all about large machinery, multinational companies, and the export of metals. But metals just make 3% of global mineral production. All of the gold mined by humans across all of our history roughly fits into just three Olympic-sized swimming pools. Most of the minerals that we use as humans are locally mined construction materials and industrial minerals. The sand, gravel and crushed stone that the world uses in just one year would not fit into 14 million Olympic-sized swimming pools. In 2015, I went to work for the United Nations Development Program to lead a new program with countries of Africa, the Caribbean, and the Pacific, which focused on the local materials mined by local people for local development. I started to call these development minerals because of their close links to poverty reduction. Millions of people, many of them informal miners, living in circumstances of poverty, are involved in the mining and quarrying of these minerals which are important for building the houses that provide shelter, the roads that enable mobility, and feeding the crops that provide sustenance. One of the workshops that we organised was held in Carrara, Italy. Carrara is famous for hosting some of the best marble limestone deposits in the world, with Carrara white marble in demand for kitchen and bathroom bench tops. We invited quarry managers from Africa, the Caribbean, and the Pacific to learn about sustainable development, and we held a field trip at a local quarry. At the site, still preserved in the quarry face, is the exact spot that the marble for Michelangelo's famous statue of David was cut. Half of the stone from the quarry is cut into large blocks for use in buildings. But the marble that makes up the other half of the quarry is naturally faulted and fractured from the geological pressures. The owner of the quarry made a deal with a pharmaceutical company to crush this fractured marble limestone that would otherwise have gone to waste so that it may be used in products like chicken feed, headache tablets, and toothpaste. Yes, there are Europeans today who literally brush their teeth with the marble of David. Minerals matter to sustainable development because they're literally the matter that underpins much of global development, whether it be the copper that wires communication the clay bricks and the roof tiles that provide shelter, the mineral fertilizers fundamental for agriculture, the lithium and the cobalt that's fueling the global transition to renewable energy, the garnet that filters water, or the gravel and stone that builds bridges and paves roads. In a few years' time, the countries of the world will come together again to renegotiate the Sustainable Development Goals and to define a post-2030 development agenda. In the lead up to this event, I believe we need to change the global conversation about minerals. 
there is a responsibility that people like me, geologists and educators, have to make obvious the links between minerals, sustainability and development. One new concept that I've introduced with a few of my colleagues is mineral security, which is when all people have sufficient and affordable access to the minerals necessary for human development, including for shelter, mobility, communication, energy and sustenance. Our hope is that mineral security, like the ideas of food security, energy security and water security before it, can help make visible the essential links between minerals, poverty reduction and environmental sustainability. There's also a responsibility that we have as a broader public, and that is to continue to demand higher standards of the mining industry, but to do so while being aware of the role of minerals in our own lives. All of us create mineral demand through our own consumption, and all of us must be part of the conversations about how those minerals are produced. Minerals are essential to our lives and to the fate of our planet. And it's now time for us to make minerals part of the shared blueprint for our sustainable world. Thank you very much.